Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you a really quick tutorial on how I use template listings on the Printify site to save myself time when I create new listings for common items like t-shirts and sweatshirts. So if you want to save yourself some time as you're creating new listings for your Etsy shop, stick around. Um, one of the things that I've found that saves me time is not having to replicate as much of the listing creation process as possible. And so one of the things that I do is I create these templates that I copy and then reuse each time I'm listing a new product. So let's jump in here. All right, so first we're gonna do the t-shirt. So I sell a lot of the Bella Canvas 3001 unisex t-shirt and my primary supplier is the Dream Junction because they offer the best price. They're usually very quick on their fulfillment times and they usually have pretty good stocking levels for the most common colors and sizes, namely black, white, navy, uh, the athletic heather color, which is the heather gray. So what I do is I have this template file, which if we first start with the design, all I did so that it would save as a, uh, as a draft was I added a sample PNG file that just says sample on it. I didn't mess around with anything, just dropped it in there. I selected the colors that I most commonly sell in my store. So I have white, black, athletic heather, dark gray heather, and navy. And then I've selected the sizes that I most commonly sell, which are small through triple X. And the details here are important because what you're trying to do is save yourself from having to do each of these things every single time you create a new listing. So I will save the product and it will create that saved listing for me. Now, here's where I really save time. I go into the edit listing, and in the product description area, I've got my title is in the format that I most commonly use. So I, I like to put multiple search terms. I use a tool like Sales Samurai, which if you're unaware of, or if you haven't heard of it, check out the video I did, uh, the review I did of Sales Samurai, because it's a pretty cool, um, tool for research that helps me identify the right keywords and phrases to put in my titles and in my tags, but that's on the Etsy site. Don't do that in Printify. But for the title, I just lay out a template here of uh, the format that I usually use. And in the description field, I have a couple important things that help save me time. Number one is the sort of default description of the item. So all listings that you create from the catalog in Printify come with a built-in description for whatever that item is. So part of this is from that default description. So where you see it talking about what it's made of, the fabric type, the weight of the fabric, that's from the default information that Printify populates in here. And then the rest of it are things that I have manipulated myself. So I'm directing my customers, hey, look at the size chart. There's a size chart in my images. I want you to look at that to make sure that you're getting the right size. So I put that in the description. There are a couple bullet points here that I deleted because I didn't think they were necessary. And I don't wanna to have to do that every single time I create a new listing. So I remove them and I make sure I've got this exactly the way I want it in my template. Lastly, I have a little sentence that I throw at the bottom of every single one of my listings that reminds my customers, everything in my shop is made to order. Because of that, I don't accept returns or exchanges, but please reach out if you have any issues. Of course, that's listed or it's stated in the listing in the appropriate fields on the Etsy site, but I like to put it in my description too, and so I have it in my template. And then the last thing is to set your prices, all right? I have my retail prices set for each size, and this is what's gonna get pushed over to the Etsy listing when I publish it. And so you want to have your template with the appropriate pricing. Now, sometimes you still have to make an adjustment here. So pay close attention to this when you're creating a real listing, just because you may not have um, all the same color options in your real listing as you do in your template. So I selected the four most common colors that I sell in my uh, t-shirt listings, but let's say I create a design that looks really good on red. That wasn't one of the ones I picked in my template. And so if I add the red color t-shirt into a listing, it's not gonna automatically have my retail price set here because it's not in the template. So I can't just skip over this altogether when I create a listing, but as long as I'm only offering the uh, same 
colors, the five colors that I selected for the template, I won't have to change anything here. So just wanted to put that disclaimer on it. You can't just automatically skip on this every single time, but it will save you some time. And then you don't need to do anything down here for publishing because this is just a template. So do save as draft and that's it. So now when I'm gonna create a t-shirt listing instead of going to the catalog. So normally I'd go to the catalog and I'd go to t-shirts and then I'd select the product I want, which is the Bella Canvas 3001. Then I would go to the supplier I want, which for me on these, it's gonna be the Dream Junction and I would do start designing, right? Don't have to do that anymore. Now I can go back, I can just start in my store and I can go to my template. I can use the copy feature, which is right up here. I'm gonna hit the copy button. It copies my template for me. I can go into the edit design. Now I can delete this uh, image, the sample image. I can replace it with whatever image I want, save it, go into my description. And the only thing I have to add in the description is the details about the design itself. And if I didn't change the colors that I offer, I don't have to touch the pricing. I can just go down to publish. As long as I've got other mockups uh, sorted and ready to go for the listing, I can just publish it to the store copy this again if I'm doing another t-shirt and on to the next one. So I can do this very quickly using this template listing and then just copying it each time. So as long as I don't need to change suppliers for my listing, I'm good to go. I can just rapid fire these listings out this way. Now I can do the same thing for sweatshirts and hoodies and other types. So let me just show you one other thing that I do for sweatshirts. So the process is the same. My supplier of choice for sweatshirts normally has been Swift POD. They've been pretty good about keeping all sizes and colors I want in stock and their quality has always been very good for me. So that's who I use primarily for my sweatshirts right now. So I would start by doing the exact same thing with the adding the design. I drop the sample in there and then I come in here to edit. And again, you'll see that I've got the title in the format that I like to use, the description of the garment itself. It's the same kind of combination of some of the default info and some things that I've changed. Again, I'm directing the customer to please review the size chart image for the right sizing. The only other thing that I add to sweatshirts and hoodies especially is I throw in here this extra paragraph it's helped me out a couple times because I have gotten questions from my customers, I would say two or three times in the past. And rather than have to get that question and message them about it, I like to put this in my description for sweatshirts and hoodies now. So this is actually something specific about the print on demand uh, industry, especially on garments where today we use direct to garment or DTG printing. One of the things that customers tend to notice, especially if they're ordering something that's black or a dark color like navy. Um, and you'll sell a lot of black sweatshirts and hoodies if you're doing print on demand. So um, one of the things that customers notice right away when they open their package and they've got their nice black sweatshirt or black hoodie with a colorful design on it is in the area where it could be printed, not, not just the actual printed area, but the whole printable area is going to have this kind of funky, stiff texture to it. And the reason for that is that in order for it to come out right and look crisp and clean and not get soaked into the fabric, the, uh, the print providers pretty much across the board these days, uh, no matter which provider you're with, they're gonna spray a pre-treatment first on the garment and then they're gonna print on top of that. It really, it helps the ink sit up on top of the fabric instead of soaking in, which makes sure that the colors stay true to the way they're supposed to look and not be either darkened or dulled by the actual black color of the fabric. So that very long explanation was to, to really explain why I'm telling my customers this. So I like to give my customers a heads up that, hey, if you're buying something that's a dark color, like black, when you get it, it's going to feel kind of stiff on the front in the print area at first, but don't worry about it. That's totally normal. It washes out normally in two to three washes. So I, I've just started putting that sort of disclaimer into my listings for hoodies and sweatshirts. And so I have it as part of my template. Other than that, the whole process is the same. Set your prices, save as a draft. And now I use the copy feature 
each time I want to create a new sweatshirt or a new hoodie and then I just go on about my process from there and that's it so I hope that creating these templates helps save you some time if you have a different or better way of saving time during the listing creation process please let me know in the comments because I love to keep learning and if it was helpful to you give me a thumbs up to help the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to the POD insights channel if you want to see more content like this thanks everybody see you next time